Welcome back, YouTube. On our last episode, the Prime Minister Jordan Brodeau was deposed due to his low popularity and our uprising on the streets of Ottawa. We have a news, a new newspaper to look at, so let's check it out. On this episode, we are going to create our election campaign and start fighting the election. Uprising in Ottawa, Jordan Brudeau deposed. A highly charged atmosphere at the National Assembly during the session to vote the deposition of the head of government. Amidst the whistling, Jordan, Jordan Brudeau found it hard to defend from the acid remarks thrown by the members of the parliament from all the parties. After that, there weren't any doubts, and with a raised hand voting, the head of government was deposed. It's the beginning of the end for Brudeau, who left the National Assembly under the jibes. This regime change was expected. The popularity of Jordan Brudeau was at an all-time low. Right on. So our law, our criticism on television about the law was popular, obviously. There's some corruption. Oh, the head of the students' union leader. That's weird. He was just supporting us. He started that uprising that we led. All right, this guy agrees with me. He's the head of the union. Okay, race for office. It's election time. Here's our advisor, secretary. Following the leadership's fall from power, the nomination of an interim leadership to conduct ongoing business, fresh elections will soon be held. You could use this period of unrest as an opportunity to rise to head of state. Well, obviously that's the plan, dude. Actually, technically, head of government. The head of state in Canada is the queen, Queen Elizabeth. And her regent in Canada is the Governor General. But they have no actual power. They just follow the advice of the Prime Minister. So I think before the official campaign period begins, when we can start making our promises, it would be wise to meet our family and friends. I, I don't know if this has a big effect. I just think in real life you would, right? Like, okay, I'm going to run for Prime Minister. Get behind me. I'll start with a doctor because I think that's reasonable. You're going to run for Prime Minister. You should be in good health. Or go see your doctor. And Cecile, our lovely wife. And then mommy and daddy. No Milo, I don't mean no Milo, I don't mean Trump. I mean the actual our actual father. Milo? Milo? I don't know. I don't like that guy. I don't like the alt-right whatsoever. Here's our doctor. It's a new doctor. I guess the old guy died. So the old doctor said I was in great form. The new doctor says I'm not so healthy. I don't know if maybe your character gets stress when you lead uprisings and stuff like that and protests, or maybe it's just the different doctors say different things. Whoa, what happened here? Prime Minister went from 55 to 11, the interim Prime Minister. Uh, we can't even see why. Hmm. Maybe 55 was just a you know, automatic number when she first gets put in and then 11 reflects her and her party's actual popularity. I'm not sure. Let's keep going. Meet the wife. Most beautiful woman in the world. Oh, it's very nice of you. Thanks. Make love. Sorry, darling, but I still have lots of classes. Yeah, 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 yeah. We've heard it all before. But she, oh yeah, she's still the same. And the meeting, darn it. How many times do I have to click? Here comes mom. Oh, we got some messages first. The majority of our men detained during the latest clashes with security forces have been released. But our most enterprising members are still detained and will be released gradually. Some may be given short prison sentences. 
So the rioters we were in control of have now been released for the most part. Some could face trial. I think that refers to the hooligans, but we didn't have any hooligans, actually. Uh, I don't know if in like in an autocratic cu country, maybe this doesn't happen. Maybe they don't get released. Maybe they get held. I'm not sure. So here's us declaring ourselves for prime minister as a candidate. And I have no arms. I don't know why. Prime Minister, this isn't America. Oh, that's it. Wow, that's short. Okay, now let's meet Mom. Flowers. Oh. Most beautiful mother. Oh. Blah, blah, blah. I think we said let's meet Dad. Okay, now let's keep going, and the election campaign period will start soon. Oh, but the interim prime minister is going to squeeze in a lot. During the official election campaign in a parliamentary country, in a parliamentary regime like Canada, I don't think you can. the government can make laws, but it hasn't officially started yet. So she's increasing the funding to combat noise pollution in the environment. All right. I guess that means like building highway barriers and stuff like that. You know, those walls between the freeway and the neighborhood. I don't know exactly what it means. Something like that. All right. The election campaign is going to start. The election campaign has officially begun. All candidates are now known. I would strongly recommend you quickly outline your electoral program and actively participate in the campaign. I am reminding you that the program must incorporate the promises that you have made to certain figures. Otherwise, they might not vote for you. We are citing, notably, the oldest person in the country and the National Association for an Alternative World's president. I would suggest keeping some of your most popular campaign promises to yourself for the moment. Then you can unveil them during the televised debate. Okay, now, the very first thing we want to do when starting an election campaign is launch a fundraising campaign for your party. It costs one and a half million dollars, which is a big chunk of our budget, but what I like to do is only use the rest, the remaining party m funds for this campaign and then save the rest for the next campaign. We'll have a buttload of money for the next campaign. So I hope we can win government on this limited budget, but even if we can't, we'll raise a lot of money and we'll bring down the government again. And, and then we probably will win because we'll have a big budget for next time. And now it's time to start our campaign. First, we want to draw up our promises. So you can see here, it says promises 15 max. Very important. Uh, you make four promises in the debate if you get to the second round. And you don't want to exceed the 15. So it's good to make only 11 now and four more in the debate. In the debate, you get to choose one topic and the other three are chosen by the public or moderator and by your opponent. So, let's make a promise. I've done the math. I did a bit of calculation before I started recording this episode. We don't have enough money to do anything except theater venues. If we're gonna make 11 rallies before the debate. Uh, it's important to do 11 before the debate though because if you don't, you might not even get to that second round. Don't forget, we're only the third most popular party at the start of the game. So we need to max out, we need to make all 11 promises. Uh, so anyways, they have to be in theater venues. 
If I had more money, I might do the first event at a bigger venue in the biggest province, Ontario. Kind of like a campaign launch. In real life, political parties often have their biggest rally at the beginning of a campaign. But we can't do that. So what I'm going to do in this case, I'm going to use all theater venues. And I'm going to plan my rallies backwards. So I'm going to start with the biggest province, Ontario, on the last day. There are 11, so day 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Let's meet in Ontario. Let's have our big rally in Ontario on August 2nd. And also before I started recording, I kind of planned out what my election campaign would be. But let me explain. It's good to make 11 promises in 11 different topics. Actually 12, including the one in the debate. The big promise I'm going to make in the debate is for education, build universities. So I'm going to save education for the debate. And in the meantime, I'm going to start in Ontario. And some of the promises are to build specific buildings in specific provinces. So obviously it's good to make that pro promise in the same province. One of the promises I want to make is to build a big sports stadium because we want to use 11 different topics here. One of them is going to be sports. And that should be in the biggest province, in Ontario. Ontario makes up like a third of the entire population of Canada. So while we're in Ontario, we should promise to build the thing in Ontario. Make sense? I think so. So I'm going to build a huge sports stadium. Why not? It'll be popular, I think. Usually sports promises are popular. So I hope it works. Yeah, it's popular. Party likes it, public likes it. So again, we're going to go to the second biggest province on the second last day. I think it's good to finish in the biggest provinces, start in the smallest ones. That is Quebec. And I have a specific promise for them as well, actually. And I'm going to build a museum. Well, here we can see. Museum with an international reputation. Canada has zero, so I'm going to build one in Quebec. Looks good. The next biggest province is British Columbia. And there, I'm going to make them a specific promise as well. There's only three that are specific to one region. This one is I'm going to build a subway or tramway. It's the third biggest province. And in the game, Ontario and Quebec already have subway and tramways. But British Columbia does not. So that's transportation. Subway and tramway, one, British Columbia. Party opinion is low on that. I don't know why. Let me just double check. Ontario has, yeah, five subways and tramways. Quebec has two. British Columbia is the third biggest province. And it has zero. And they're not building any right now either. Okay, good. So that was right. Let's keep going. The next biggest province is Alberta. Sometimes you have to research the real life things of each country, like which are the biggest provinces, etc. Or you can check in the game under this flag for each region. You can check. But that's a bit time consuming. Usually you can just go on Wikipedia and call up like, you know, list of the provinces of Canada or whatever country it is. Alberta. So now I'm going to address the promises I made to figures. Uh, I think health is important. It's one of the most important sectors, so let's do that first. And that is to fund the geriatric wards to eight stars. 
Okay. After Alberta, the next biggest province is Manitoba. So now we can do the 39 hour work week. That's our other promise that we made. The next biggest province after Manitoba is Saskatchewan. And a lot of sitcoms, Americans have problems saying this word. I guess it's a running gag in both Canada and USA. Saskatchewan. It's a prairie province, mostly farmers, very flat. And I think what I'm going to uh, promise here is head of state. You can't make provinces uh, promises under this tab during the election debate for some reason. So I'm going to make it now. I'm going to promise to change the renewal of head of government's mandate. Limiting the number of successive terms can help to avoid political inaction and can make the leading team be active during its term. On the other hand, it means that voters are not free to elect their favorite personality for the long term. So we just brought down an unpopular, overbearing government. I think this is a good promise to make that, you know, if I'm a prime minister, I can only be reelected once. Don't worry, we can always change it later, which we probably will, because the goal in this game is to stay in power for as long as possible. And. The next biggest province. Now we go out to the Maritimes. Nova Scotia is the biggest one out there. I think an important sector is housing. I'm a socialist, right? So I'm trying to address, like, you know, healthcare, education, housing, the things that are important to the working class and the poor. And establish a monthly rent allowance for low salaries. Allowances can be granted both to new owners and to tenants, and the amount of the allowance is based on the household income. So poor people are going to get a subsidy from the government to pay their rent or their mortgage. I'm going to raise it from 409 to 500. Okay, the next biggest province is New Brunswick, very close to Nova Scotia. And environment is important. We're going to run as kind of eco-socialists. So we're going to offer to ratify the Paris Accords on Climate, the new treaty to reduce greenhouse gases and to use green energy. The Paris Accords on Climate was adopted at the International Conference in Paris called COP21 in December 2015. It limits global warming to less than 2 degrees Celsius by 2100 by means of the commitment of all countries to make efforts in restructuring and in making the necessary investments in energy. The accord will go into effect in 2020, provided that it is ratified by 55 countries representing more than 55% of greenhouse gas emissions. Ratification must be approved by the parliaments of all concerned countries. Countries will also have the option of withdrawing. So Canada was a signatory to this, but now we need to get Parliament to approve it. We need to do that before 2020 for it to go into effect, but actually we have until 2100. I don't know exactly the timeline. Anyways, we made that promise. That was New Brunswick. So next is Newfoundland and Labrador. The youngest province of Canada. It joined in only 1949 a few years after the Second World War. It was an independent, well, not independent, a colony of the UK until then. I'm going to make a promise about immigration. Establish the integration policy. Opened. This is actually quite important in this game, in democracies at least, because if you don't do this, you get lots of riots. But once you do this, they seem to die down, I find. 
And now the smallest of the ten pro we have ten provinces and three territories. So here's the smallest province, Prince Edward Island. P E I. Maybe you know Anne of Green Gables. Or maybe some of you even know Stomp and Tom Connors. Those are some of the famous things of Prince Edward Island. They make a lot of potatoes. And I'm gonna make a research promise. I think research in this game is very important. I don't know if the public really cares. But in this game, I do think it is important. So I'm going to offer to build the maximum of the huge multidisciplinary centers. They each hold 2,000 researchers. I'm going to build 20 of them, distributed over the full territory. And now we're going to go to the smallest territory. This is our 11th and final rally. You can see here, we, after making 10, we don't have enough for any of the bigger ones. So we had to make all theater venue bookings. And what I like to do with the final promise is promise how you're going to pay for it all. Because I'll show you in a second, that matters. Taxation. I'm going to create a Tobin tax, a tax on financial transactions. Also known as the Tobin tax after the winner of the Nobel Prize for Economics, who put forward the idea in 1972 this tax applies to international financial trans transactions and is aimed at limiting speculation. Anti-globalization organizations strongly support it. Huh, maybe I should have made that promise to the ultramondialist guy. Oh well. And I'm just going to make a 0.1% promise. But look how much money it would raise. $14 billion dollars. And all it would mean is that if you're making an international financial transaction, like buying shares on the New York Stock Exchange or the Tokyo Stock Exchange, if you buy 1,000 shares, you have to pay the price of 1,001 shares. And that, that one extra share worth goes to the government of Canada. So now we've made all our promises. Most of them are fairly popular with the public. Except the taxation. Yeah, of course, people don't like raising taxes. The party likes all of them except the new subway in BC. I don't know why, that's weird. But the party like the public likes it. Now if you look, go back at the candidates tab, you can see our program popularity is 62. That's quite good. Number of rallies 11, that's exactly where we want it until the debate. And the budgetary impact is minus $6.3 billion. So we made lots of promises, but because of that tax we promised, our election campaign program actually promises a reduction in the deficit of $6.3 billion per year. That's awesome. Once, If we get elected, we're going to reduce the deficit by even more than that. But that's a great start, I think. The public, I guess, I assume the public does judge your promises. If you're promising the earth and the moon and with no way to pay for it i think they'll be skeptical but if you offer a way to actually cut the deficit i think they'll be impressed i'm going to end this episode here it's about 24 minutes and in the next episode we will start canvassing the public figures to get them to support us after we release our campaign to the public Thank you very much for watching. Please like this episode and subscribe to my channel. I think I'm going to upload this video twice. Once as part of our Canadian Socialist Opposition playthrough and once as an election campaign tutorial. It'll be the same video, but it'll be listed twice on my channel. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next episode. Bye bye.